dum 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 Let's see, would you like some water? Well, yes, I'd like some water. Oh, isn't that cool? The water is flowing. Hmm. And the pump is working, like it's supposed to. We have water. We have water. Yay! Woohoo! Woohoo! So that means that the plumbing is... Awesome. All righty. Pardon me while I turn this back off and the pump shuts off by itself. Awesome, dude. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, everybody. This is Bill with I Ride Tiny House Adventures. Hope you're having a good day today. Well, we thought it was time that we'd give you an update as to what we're, we're doing with the trailer. We've been uh, tinkering more with the trailer here. Uh, in the last uh, couple of days whenever we have time we do have other things that we have to do uh, other responsibilities that we have to take care of but uh, most of the free moments that we have we spend on the trailer so we're going to show you a couple things that uh, we've got accomplished and show you what we're currently working on and uh, there will be a video real soon uh, that will cover uh, our next project on the trailer in more detail but right now let's focus on uh, a couple of things uh, we got going here and we're going to start and there's a good shot of the trailer from the uh, from the driver's side of the trailer right here but I want to show you uh, how we're going to have our our setup for the drains that we have now we have several drains down the side of the trailer here uh, we have the shower drain which uh, is going into that tank right there we have the shower drain that's going into that tank right there and then we also have the sink drain, which is separate, and it's going in to this tank right here. In addition to that, we also have, let me think now, we have a drain to drain the 50 gallon fresh water tank, and we'll show you how that works when we get inside the trailer here in a little bit. And then we also have a system drain that drains the entire system mounted at the lowest point of the trailer and uh, probably you're seeing a photo now or, or I just flashed up a photo so you could see what that is. Now both of our uh, drains that we have like for the sink and for the shower have regular RV style dumps on them just like a sewer dump on an RV on a regular RV and we have one positioned of course up front where the shower is and then one positioned over here where the sink is and we have two options that we well we have actually have three options that we can go with one option is the option that you're seeing right now with the little short uh, tote hoses they call them and those hook up directly to the three inch sewer dump which is tucked up in underneath the trailer and you'll probably have seen a photo already or you're fixing to see one uh, there and then of course the one that is tucked up underneath the trailer where the shower is now, when I made those two dumps that come out, you know, a, a cargo trailer sits very fairly low to the ground, and I didn't want to just drop it all the way down and out because uh, then there would be a big uh, chance of it possibly getting knocked off, you know, because the trailer sits low enough as it is. And as you can see in the photos, they're tucked up underneath there, and then they got a slight turn down. So uh, that's why we did that, to help protect that. Now, when we're, this is one way that we can drain into these tanks. This is a 10 gallon tank here for the sink. And this is a 22 gallon tank for the shower right here. Now, I wanna point out another option that we have uh, in tight spots. As you can see right here, these tanks also have a regular garden hose type fitting. This 90 degree uh, angle piece, uh, that's, that's, uh, one, that's what I added onto it right there. You can buy them at Home Depot or Lowe's, either one. They're uh, really inexpensive. The tanks themselves come with this flex hose right here. And if for some reason this flex hose isn't shaped just the way I need it when I get more involved in uh, a quick method to hook these up, I can always make up my own because you can buy these fittings right here with barbs coming off the end for either half inch hose or three quarter inch braided hose, either one. So I can custom make one any way I need to. Now both of our drains, the caps, and this is the cap that would go on the shower drain, which is tucked up underneath here. Both of our caps that we are using also accept a garden hose fitting on the end there. So in situations where we have a tight uh, spot 
and we don't have quite as much room to have this type of drain we can still go with this setup here and that gains us an extra three inches or so of clearance uh, whenever we need it so uh, that's the option that we have and we can do that on both tanks there so anyway that's what we got going on there now i'm going to step inside and i think what i'll do let me come around here deb's waiting for us inside so let me come around over here this is the day before christmas by the way hope you all are gonna have a happy holiday with family and friends don't eat too much <laughs> don't eat too much famous last words right all right let's step on in here and uh, oh let me shut this door we got the heater going it's about whoops yep let me get that it's about 45 degrees outside but uh we just turned this on a little bit ago and I don't know if you can see the whole area. Here, let me zoom in on it. The thermometer says we're, oh, we've gained, and this has only been on for about 30, 45 minutes. We've gained about, uh, oh, I don't know, we're sitting around 57, 58 degrees, somewhere in that ballpark right there. So uh, this little 1,000-watt heater works pretty decent. Pretty decent. Of course, Deb's still got her sweater on. Deb will have her sweater on. Yeah, Deb will have her sweater on until April. <laughs> That's for sure. All right, well, let me flip around over here and uh, show you show you this here. We finally got our faucet set up here. And it actually, it's going to sit more like that right there. And uh, by the way, this heater is on a ground fault protected breaker in the breaker panel, just so you'll know. Okay, now, uh, we've got... This faucet mounted here, and looky here. <laughs> Could you hear the pump? Yeah, yeah, the pump's working. All right, now, this has no drain on it. We didn't put a drain on this. This is mainly just for washing our hands right here. So, and I've already tested it in the house. Yes, I, even though I have big hands and everything, I can wash my hands uh, and, and not worry about overfilling this, this uh, vessel. Let's call it a vessel. It is a vessel. It's a vessel. That's right. And then, of course, when we get done, all we got to do is walk right over here and pour it down the drain. Just like that. And that's how we're going to do that. So, that is the whole idea behind that. Now, the main reason why we did that, it was just way too much hassle to try to figure out how to put a drain in this sink with the things that are mounted underneath it. And in addition to that, when I go down below the floor here, this is the tongue of the trailer. And on the tongue, you have several uh, cross members. Uh, the tongue comes way back underneath the trailer. And uh, just too much stuff gets in the way. And uh, quite honestly, probably the way I would have had to have done that was to, uh, was to you know, drop the pipe, the drain pipe, below the frame. And we're not going to do that. And I sure ain't going to drill no holes through the through the uh, frame in order to run a, a pipe uh, or even a hose for that matter. So uh, that's why we decided to do that. It was just the simplest way to go. Now, and while we're here, we don't have our... what, what, what is, What's this shower head that we're going to be mounting on this? What is it called? What's it called? Oxy. Oxid. 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 Uh, yeah, something like that. Oxygenics. Oxygenics. All right, go ahead and hit that. There you go. Yep. And then show them the cold water side too. And there you go. All right. So that's all working with no problem. Okay. Now, so let's uh, let's show them something else here in a second. Okay. Well, why don't we show them how the how the uh, sink faucet works? Okay. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Let me get over here. All right. Have at it. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, we're tickled to death about that. Uh, we're tickled to death. It all works exactly the way it's supposed to work, all the way down. And our drains are working the way we anticipated they would and everything. So so we're covered on that. And by the way, there was one other thing I needed to mention on the, on the outside drains. I showed you two options, but I told you we had three. The third option would be if we happen to be at a site where they have a sewer hookup right at the site and we don't need to use the tanks, 
all we have to do is come out of each drain with a sewer hose and then go into a Y connector and from the Y connector go into the to the sewer hookup at the campsite. So that's the third option on that. So we got that out of the way. Now, I'll show you what uh, we did here. The pump is right down here uh, below the sink. And one other thing I want to show you. Can you scoot over a little bit? Here, let me show them something here. What I did, I went to O'Reilly's and I got one of these uh, flat disconnects and I wired that up to a flat disconnect and um, that way if I ever need to take the pump out for any reason and work on it rather than take a chance on messing with my my splices that I did here uh, or if I had one single splice uh, I don't have to worry about that I just simply pull this apart and I can disconnect it and take it right out and by the way I'll post a link I found a really really cool way to splice wire and I'll post a link on that uh, and then, of course, you can see we have the uh, shrink uh, heat shrink tubing over the splices there. But it was a really, really cool way to do that. And once you, when you splice it the way they show you on uh, on this uh, YouTube channel, it uh, there's no pulling it apart. It makes a very, very firm connection, and there's no pulling apart. So you'll see a link to that. One other thing I do want to point out. Let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, right here. All right. In one of my previous videos when we were showing how we were doing the pump with the two different check valves and everything I said that on the uh, the outlet end of the pump I was going to use this fitting right here and this fitting uh, was set up where it would screw right in to the pump right here and guess what that fitting did not work it leaked around it uh, evidently it's not made for that so it leaked around it so what we ended up doing instead we uh, we used the regular fitting that came with the pump which is the same fitting on the other side and but we used the same type fitting over here that came with the pump and then uh, I uh, rigged I have found a fitting that was a shark bite uh, back here push connect and then there was a half inch female thread here and I screwed in a, a uh, half inch female nylon fitting that's also a half inch barb and uh, <clears throat> connected these that way with a short uh, piece of braided hose and the leak went away no leaks whatsoever now uh, because of that so keep that in the back of your mind folks uh, and you know I, I don't know I might have ruined this fitting for some reason or it could be that it simply was not designed you know to work on the pump it's two different kinds of fittings so um, that was a little bit of a lesson that I learned there but uh, this worked out real well this worked out real well here so it came out real good and we're happy about that so one other thing I want to point out to you I can get back over here I don't get up and down like I used to no yeah, nope. <laughs> all right yeah well, I talked about one of the drains that we have that is a way to drain the fresh water tank and you can see it right down there you see that braided hose coming out of the bottom of the tank uh, let's don't don't uh, look at the black fitting yet that's up on top of the tank we'll talk about that in a minute but uh, you see that piece of half inch braided hose is coming out of the bottom of the tank it is going into a barbed fitting there uh, what I ended up doing there I got a half inch T that was female threads on every every opening and uh, on the where it's coming from the tank into the T uh, I screwed in a, a barb fitting that's half inch male on one end and half inch barb on the other and then did the did one that's a 90 on the other end of the fitting that is half inch male on one end and half inch barb and that tube that you see going up right here is the one that's going to the pump right there now where we came off right down there that is a little two inch long nipple that's threaded on both ends screwed that in there and there and then it went into this half inch ball valve and then there's another uh, uh, barbed fitting well it's a uh, half inch male threads on one end and uh, and uh, half inch barb on the other but it's also a 90 and it turns straight down and I have about uh, oh I've got about a six inch long piece of braided hose that's attached to that and it goes through the floor right there and I can actually access that. I can reach through the cabinet and access that ball valve. Uh, right now it's closed. 
but I can access that, access that handle from uh, one of the openings right here. Uh, actually, easier from that one there. I've done it both ways, but that's the easiest there. And I can reach in there and open that if I need to drain the tank. And we've already tested it, and it works fantastic. Now, I know we've got a Sharp 90 coming right off of there, going up to the pump. And we've got, you know, three or four other 90s in the whole, pl in the whole plumbing system. I tried to avoid using as many 90s as possible, any, you know, straight 90s. But uh, we had to use a few. But you know what? We've got really, really good pressure. Uh, whether we're hooked up to regular city water or we're hooked up just using the pump, the pressure is very similar between the two. I will say, though, that I am using a, a pressure regulator when I'm hooked up to city water. I keep it limited to around 40, 45 pounds. So, uh, both, and I think the pump is rated at 40 or 45, and I think it's rated at three gallons per minute, if I remember correctly. It's a sure flow pump. Now, let's talk about... Let's talk about that black fitting that you see right there. Now, the way this tank came, it came with um, the water fill is an inch and a quarter. Uh, and it was threaded, and it's got good threads on it. And, and of course, it called, and of course the fitting that, uh, that we mounted on the outside of the trailer, which is a regular RV-type uh, water inlet, uh, receptacle out there which will accept either city water or uh, it also has an opening for the uh, a gravity fill um, it's rated at an inch and a quarter in size well first what we did we ordered a a uh, nylon barb fitting we couldn't find any local around here but we ordered a fitting that was uh, inch and a quarter male on one end and inch and a quarter barbed on the other and this tubing that you see here the tubing right there that tubing is regular RV style tubing. We got that at uh, Camp World, and uh, but they only sell it in ten foot lengths, and we only needed about half that. Actually, we needed less than half. I got enough to do it again if I ever need to. And <clears throat> now it fit perfect on the RV style uh, water inlet receptacle that we mounted to the outside of the trailer. Of course, it did because you know, they're both from the RV industry. But when we tried to hook that regular nylon barb fitting that we ordered up to this uh, up to this tubing, it was too big. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't work at all. So I looked and looked and looked, and finally we found this fitting that you see, which is inch and a quarter male, and it too is rated at inch and a quarter uh, on on the other end uh, in a barb, but it fits. It worked. You could get the uh, tubing over it. And we got it at Granger. I'll see if I can find the link to that one. Um, I'm sure by now you've seen a photo of it or you're getting ready to see a photo real quick of it. But uh, the only place we found that at was Granger. And um, I found it online and I went down to the local Granger dealer and because uh, I wanted to talk to someone in person. And uh, they ordered it in for me. I was able to pick it up the next day by 930 in the morning. And uh, it worked perfect. Everything worked perfect. So just so you'll know, little things there that uh, we learned along the way. And uh, so there you go. Now, what's next? What will be our next video? And we've already kind of started working on it. We've been taking photos as we go along. But now we're getting ready to, we've got the refrigerator all leveled up and got it mounted in here where it goes. It's uh, not secured yet. And that will be my next step. I've done a couple of preliminary things that we will talk about in the next video. Um, but right now, that's that's the next thing we're gonna start working on. In fact, we're gonna start tinkering with it right after we get done shooting this video. So that'll be the next thing. And uh, so, I don't know what else to say. You know anything else to say? Just hope you all have a great holiday. Yeah. A great New Year. Let's hope we have a good New Year's. Well, let's hope we have a good New Year's and a good year to follow. Well, yeah. Yeah. 2019, yes. 2019. Can't believe it. Okay, should, should we reveal the actual date that we're actually going to start uh, setting up housekeeping in the trailer? And this one's firm this time? I don't believe you. <laughs> sure, go ahead and I'll have a thousand people that will hear you say it. Go ahead. March the 1st. March the 1st. I promised her that we'll be setting up with full housekeeping March the 1st. So we'll be in it March the 1st. How many weekends is that? Well, hopefully I'll have some time during the week to work on it, too. Okay. Eight. Eight weekends. Oh, thank you. Well, it better be done before that. Look at there. The temperature has climbed a couple more degrees since, since we've been talking here. Yeah. Oh, I didn't show them my pretty trim that I cut in there. 
cut that had double 45 that on each side we used a piece of that same kind of uh, trim uh, that we used uh, to do the nose of the trailer this one here I had to have it where I could take it off uh, to have access to trailer wiring that's directly behind it so uh, I've got a couple of screws I got some screws there and some screws there and uh, that way I can take it back off if I ever need to take it back off. And you haven't poly dyed or anything yet, right? I've done it, no. Okay, all right, no, it still needs to be poly. I've got to touch up my yeah. and poly that, and then I've got to finish this. <laughs> and then she's been telling me what kind of trim she wants me to do Yes. Uh, along uh, the round. cabinet here. Yeah, we're going to use regular quarter round, I think. Uh, three quarter, quarter round, all the way around that. And uh, anyway, I think that's about it. I think that's it. Unless if you had, well, you've already added. I've already added my yeah. thing. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, I guess we'll uh, we'll call it a day, and uh, we'll be getting another update up before too long. So for now, this is Bill and Deb with I Ride Tiny House Adventures saying goodbye for now. Thanks for watching. All right. We'll see y'all later. Y'all take care now. Bye bye.